The tech tyrants just went nuclear ahead of schedule. A month ago, I said this. The greatest single threat to your freedom here in the West is a handful of tech tyrants and the trust and safety teams on their platforms who are steering public opinion in certain directions by controlling what you can say and who will hear what you say. And I said this. If you still don't understand why I say that the greatest single threat to your freedom here in the West is a handful of tech tyrants and the trust and safety teams on their platforms, just think about this. How much political influence did Facebook and Twitter and YouTube wield just 10 years ago? Pretty much none. How much political influence do they wield now? Do they ever get better? Or do they constantly, relentlessly get worse, more power hungry, more oppressive? You are living right in the middle of the most epic power grab in history. If these tech tyrants have been able to seize this much power and influence over the past decade, how much power and influence do you think they'll have in another decade? How correct was I? Well, Twitter just slapped the President of the United States right in the mouth. And there is absolutely nothing he can do about it because the tech tyrants are now more powerful, as far as speech is concerned, than the U.S. government. CNN reports. Twitter has suspended President Trump from its platform, the company said Friday evening, after close review of recent tweets from the at real Donald Trump account and the context around them, we have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence, Twitter said. In the context of horrific events this week, we made it clear on Wednesday that additional violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this very course of action. Well, if President Trump was inciting violence, that would indeed be against the platform's policies. Unless your name happens to be Muhammad, in which case you get a free pass. So let's see what Trump tweeted. Twitter's decision followed two tweets by Trump Friday afternoon that would end up being his last. The tweets violated the company's policy against glorification of violence, Twitter said. Oh my goodness, he was glorifying violence? And these two tweets must be read in the context of broader events in the country and the ways in which the president's statements can be mobilized by different audiences, including to incite violence, as well as in the context of the pattern of behavior from this account in recent weeks. The first tweet was about Trump's supporters. The 75 million great American patriots who voted for me, America first, and make America great again, will have a giant voice long into the future. They will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. Huh. So that's glorifying violence. The second indicated Trump did not plan to attend Joe Biden's inauguration. To all of those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. So those were the tweets that were glorifying and inciting violence? Twitter said the tweet concerning inauguration could be viewed as a further statement that the election was not legitimate. It also said that the tweet could be interpreted as Trump saying that the inauguration would be a safe target for violence because he would not be attending. Ah, now I get it. So when Trump tweeted that he wouldn't be attending Biden's inauguration, this could be read as an invitation to white supremacist terrorists to attack the inauguration. Sounds like the trust and safety team graduated from the Kathy Newman School of Comprehension. Trump's other statement about American patriots suggested that he plans to continue to support empower and shield those who believe he won the election, Twitter said. Isn't he about to be gone? How exactly will he be empowering and shielding people after he's gone? Not surprisingly, this ban is being celebrated by Trump's enemies. 
Civil rights leaders who have long criticized tech platforms for spreading hate speech and division welcomed Twitter's decision. Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, called it an excellent step, a fitting end to a legacy of spewing hate and vitriol, Greenblatt said. President Trump incited the violent riots at the Capitol using social media and paid the price. Eric Nang, a spokesman for Muslim Advocates, said Twitter is showing real leadership. As Twitter notes, letting Trump continue to post tweets, Facebook posts, and YouTube videos for his white nationalist supporters risks further incitement of violence, Nang said. Now it is up to Facebook and Google slash YouTube to follow Twitter's lead. Wow, that's interesting. That was the spokesman for Muslim advocates agreeing that Trump was glorifying and inciting violence when he said that he wouldn't attend Biden's inauguration. You could ask the same spokesman and the same organization if Allah was inciting violence when he ordered Muslims to fight those who do not believe in Allah, or if Muhammad was inciting violence when he ordered his followers to execute anyone who leaves Islam, and you'd get a resounding no. Welcome to a world where your speech is now monitored and controlled by people who decide what you mean based on whether they like you or not. If they like you, then you obviously mean something entirely peaceful, even if you're openly calling for the violent subjugation of the entire world. If they don't like you, then you're obviously calling for violence, even if you're simply giving instructions on how to make a sandwich. Uh, making a sandwich? Uh, oh my goodness, you know who also likes sandwiches? Hitler! Shut that sandwich account down immediately! Those sandwich instructions are basically a dog whistle uh, calling for the next holocaust! If you have a small account or a small channel and they don't like you, they'll just ban you. What are you going to do about it? If you have a big account, or a big channel, and they don't like you, they've already decided that they're going to ban you. They're just waiting for you to say something, anything, that they can call hate speech. But if they really, really don't like you, they interpret everything you say as hate speech. So they can point to anything you say and call it hate speech. Now, I think the tech tyrants jumped the gun on this one. They had already won. There was no need to spike the ball. But they decided to do an end zone celebration that showed everyone how much power they have. About three or four years too early, this could backfire. If Twitter can justify silencing the President of the United States by saying that him not attending an inauguration is a call for violence, they can justify silencing anyone for saying anything. And most people don't like the idea of a bunch of narcissistic control freaks being able to silence them. But we'll see what happens. 